My name is Laura, and my friend from high school committed suicide. All right, everyone, we're here again. This is David Ferrugio, another episode of Dead Talks. Hopefully you know the name by now. I have a uh, one of my best friends here today. I actually met her on a Dorito spec commercial that I don't even think made the cut anywhere. No. Yeah. Well, no, that's, they didn't want us. Well, I'm not going to release it then. <laughs> um, well, well, I know Laura uh, from the Doritos commercial became friends for the last five, six, seven. I don't know how long. She is an <laughs> actress. She also has her own podcast called Two and a Half Girls with two more of my friends, and it is actually really hilarious. So check out Two and a Half Girls at your leisure. In the meantime. Uh, here's Laura Samuels. Laura, how are you? Oh my gosh, I'm so great. Thanks I'm, for having me. Um, of course. You're so special. You are so special. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't want to get into how she got here. It took her about an hour and a half, car, <sighs> car troubles and all that. Yeah. Uh, we're not here to talk about the death of a car. I mean, maybe. I could talk about it all day. Okay. But. <laughs> <laughs> all right, maybe the second half. <laughs> uh, all right, just to get rolling, let us know uh, about your friend that we're going to be talking about today. Um. Yeah, so I was very good friends with this girl in high school. Um, obviously I graduated 10 years ago and like, you know, everybody kind of drifts apart from their high school friends, like, you know, as life goes on. But she was someone that, you know, I would always keep in touch with and stuff over like Facebook and we would just like randomly check on each other. But in high school, we had this like really tight knit group of friends and we, you know, loved her. She was, she was a, she was a wacky, wacky girl. But last year, this time last year, actually, which is like really strange that I'm doing this right now because mm -hmm. yeah, this happened literally like a year ago around this time. Um, she ended up taking her life and oh, it really shook me and I've lost, you know, there've been other people that I've, that I've lost in my life. Like I lost my grandmother seven years ago. I was really close with my grandmother, loved her very much. Um, but you know, like I was saying to you earlier, I just feel like you know, you kind of expect death from the elderly and you kind of like, ex you're, you're like ready for that. You're, you're more prepared for that than a 28 year old girl who's like just starting out in life. And like, you know, she had a great job. She, she seemed happy in all of her posts and stuff, but I know deep down, she's like kind of always struggled with depression and, and, you know, I think she just finally like had it or, you know, why anybody, why anybody commits suicide? Like they just, don't want to live anymore. Yeah. And you said and, you kind of recognize that though along her life? Um, I've rec yeah, we would always recognize that there was like a depression there or there she she was fighting that a lot. And like kind of you know, you know sometimes how like Robin Williams and like all these people that are like really funny and like have this like big personality are usually the ones that are like fighting the hardest battles behind closed doors. I feel like that's kind of how she was because she was like one of the funniest people I've ever met. She was just a wacky, fun, crazy girl, didn't care what people thought about her and just kind of like, you know, she she always was the one who had us all just like rolling on the floor laughing. Um, but then there would be days that we would see her in the hallways and you could just tell that like she just like wasn't like present, you know, mm -hmm. that day. And so I I regret, you know, the dr the drifting apart after I wish you know I wish I could go back in time and like check on her more and, and see how she was actually doing you know what I mean because clearly it, she wasn't doing well you know even though Facebook would suggest otherwise like it was very obvious in the way that she killed herself as well it was very final very I mean suicide's always final but yeah the way the way in which she did it was very much like I'm done yeah. you know um so that that was probably it hit so close to home because it was out of the blue, a friend, a, a good friend. You know what I mean? It just it really, really hit close to home. And it kind of like shook me to my core because I just, you know, I, it was it was out of the blue. I wasn't expecting it. Um, and then recently, actually, this just came to me, this other girl who I was friends with, not really like really, really good friends with, but. We were friends. We went to school together for two years when I went to this private school. She just ended up committing suicide. And it's like the older I get, the more this is happening. You know what I mean? And like, obviously, everybody's got different journeys. But like, it's insane to me how like these people that I've like known in my life are now like slowly, this is becoming a thing. And like, 
we're, we're dropping like flies. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that happened a year ago. And, and I think, you know, the only, the only like real silver lining that came out of it was it really kind of reconnected everyone from my grade. Um, they were all in this giant group chat now. We'll like send like pictures or like Facebook memory, you know how they'll do Facebook memories. And like, yeah. like the other day her, it was a picture of me and her from like junior year maybe. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it was like us playing in the snow and I was just like, Oh God, that's, that, that's weird. Like, that's so weird. I remember that day. I remember it vividly. And like, it's nice to like have that group of people who understand and, and knew her and miss her too, just reconnect and kind of keep her memory alive. Mm-hmm. Because it was kind of weird. I found out at my friend's birthday dinner um, this time last year, found out at a birthday dinner. And I was just like, so I think I was really, really upset because nobody around me knew her or cared because they didn't know her. And I, it just, yeah, it shook me. I was just so affected by it. Um, I couldn't stop thinking about her mom. Couldn't stop thinking about her sister. She was really close with her sister. And it was just just sad. It was just, you know, really. So when you said you kind of had that underlying, you know, impression that there was something, you know, to to battle with depression early on, was there ever a moment where you or any one of the group of friends mentioned it to her? Is like, at at that age, you know, it's kind of. At that age, it, I don't know why you don't talk about things like that at that age. Like, I feel like that kind of sets in more as an adult you check on your friends more as an adult and like in in middle school high school you're kind of like a mini narcissist you know what I mean um but we would without being like hey are you depressed you know what I mean (laughs) we would (laughs) we'd be like something's up with Halston like we we recognize that there was something wrong and we'd be like hey are you good girl like what's going on she was not a talker when it came to like what she was feeling deep down, not a talker at all. And um, like me, my personality type, I'm like, I'm pissed. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone should know it. I'm in a bad mood. Like everybody ask about me. How, yeah. how am I? You yeah. know what I mean? But she she wasn't like that. And she had experienced a lot of loss in her life. She lost her father. Um, I don't remember. It's been so long now since I was told like – how her father died but he did he died it was very very hard for her mom and her sister and her to like continue life without him and I believe right after he died she had moved to our school so she was only without him for a small time and then was in like a new uh environment and so she just had it rough you know she she wasn't always dealt the best hand of cards but but yeah I think we did we we would Without saying the words, are you depressed? Are you okay? Should you go get help? We were always like, like, what's like, we can tell that there's something seriously wrong with you today. And like, was there any inclination in regards to like, that's news to me. I didn't prior pre conversation. I know about her dad passing. Yeah. Yeah. Was there any story of, I don't know if she has siblings to talk to her mom about that kind of being the turning point, or you think it was maybe just something? She never fully recovered from that i think she missed her dad very very much and i don't know if that was has anything to do with why she took her life but i know that that was always something that weighed heavy on her um yeah and so i mean i don't think i don't i don't know when they someone goes you ever let's leave a fucking note how do you even know the I reason for think, all this could be a uh, kind of a compilation of everything. I don't think she did leave a note. I think she just. I don't know how many people leave a note. I've never actually heard that in real life. Like it's not like a movie. People leave notes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, wait. I'm like, yeah, but in the movies, they leave <laughs> notes. <laughs> I'm actually surprised. I, the Robin Williams thing you mentioned, I was, in my head, I was like, I wonder how long it's going to take Laura to make a movie reference in this. And it was in the first three minutes. So I'm sorry. impressed. Sorry. Yeah. I can't help it. <laughs> no, I, am okay. I, I am what I do. 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 Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Seuss over here. Uh, so I'm, I'm interested in hearing, since you guys, I mean, the silver lining and the, there's always something good that comes out of. A tragic event, in my opinion. It's just a matter if you open your eyes and see it. And you guys right. connected again. Do you guys – was it a kind of like a, a side saddle connection in the sense that you guys didn't really talk about it or amongst that group? 
did you guys discuss, you know, those pondering questions of why did she do it or how did you get you guys yes. mourn, did you guys mourn together? Yes, we all mourned together and that's what made it so much easier for me being out here because nobody else is out here. Everybody else is back in Texas living their lives, doing their own things. And what made it at least easier for me was being able to like mourn with a group of people that knew her and loved her just as much as I did. And it like brought the whole clan back together. There's like 20 girls in this group chat wow. of people that she had touched in, you know, so many ways. And um, there was this thing. This was really cool, actually. Um, a few days after she passed away. So Halston had this thing about like hair being in her fruit in her food and like would always she would fruit always too. she would always find hair in her food and like it would just like it was like an ongoing like joke you know from god just being like oh you know there's fucking hair in your food <laughs> and um so a few days after she died um this thing in the group chat we were all finding hair in our food get out of here and we were like it's so Halston, like, like this would, so, like, I can't believe we're all finding hair in our food. This is so bizarre and like all, weird. Like multiple, not, not multiple ones of us. Not every single one of us, but we were all we, like, if someone found a hair in their food, they would take a picture and send it to the group, and it was like happening like very often. And we were like, this is so insane. Did you guys eat the food with the hair in honor of her? Or? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I ain't bothered by little hair. It's all good. <laughs> I am tremendously bothered by hair in my food. I don't even know. Actually, you know, as I got older, I started it's just gross, like, just like, but like, uh, well, if it's a homemade meal, I'm not so concerned. But if it comes from right. a restaurant, that's just disgusting. That is really gross. But nothing can keep me from my mashed potatoes, David. <laughs> no, you are, you, are, you are a southern gal, so I guess that's how it works. No hair in my mashed potatoes. Uh, I don't care. But yeah, that was cool. That was really cool, just because like it made us feel like she was present, even though she wasn't, and um. <laughs> yeah, it was I was like she would do this. She would like, you know, whatever. Come come back in whatever form that she could and that like by putting hair in everybody's food as like one last like yeah. joke on everybody, you know what I mean? So, that was cool. So there's 20 girls in that group? There's I mean, I'd have to go look at the group chat. But there's around 20 girls in that group chat. There's a lot of us. Did you notice any differences in how everyone expressed or felt? It's kind of tough via text, I guess. I don't know if you like rendezvous with these people in person. Um you know, we used to all hang out. We were a big group of friends in middle school and high school. And most of us went to school together since we were in kindergarten. So we had grown up together. And um, Halston didn't get there till middle school. But when she became a part of our friend group, she kind of, in a way, became a glue. She brought a lot of us, like, together and there was like some of some of these girls were agreed beneath us and have become some of my really good friends because Halston brought them into our group of friends and you know what I mean so she was in her way like a little bit of, of glue that like kind of held that group together um but it's good because you know that group chat's there and there will be days that someone will text and be like hey I'm not doing well with this today I'm I'm angry today like why did she why you know like i'm i'm a little upset and like it's it's good for us to like bounce off each other how we're feeling about it because everybody deals with grief differently and it comes in waves and you know how did yeah. you deal with it because this is this the, your first quote-unquote intimate experience with someone dying in your life other than my grandmother right. and that um, was after, grandmother was before grandmother was seven years ago and this was just to paint the picture uh for those this was a year ago this was a year so ago. that's fresh mm -hmm. yeah and in regards to that, how, how, how have you seen yourself handle it? Because you mentioned prior, like you said already while we're on record, um, you know, when someone dies and they're older, obviously it's sad, but it's it's not as much of a surprise. And the way she did it was so abrupt that- My grandmother, well, so my grandmother had a stroke, so it was a little bit of a surprise, but, you know, you just expect eventually your, your grandparents are going to pass. And like- Obviously, I was still very, very upset. I, I was out here and my whole family was with her at the hospital and like I wasn't able to be there mm -hmm. because I'm here and like it did happen so sudden and whatever. But but I knew, you know, she's in her 80s. Like, like I just knew that that was coming someday. And like, obviously, it's coming someday for everybody. But I just it was shocking news to get that news about Halston. It was very... I, I, yeah like out of the blue and we had spoke on Insta, or on, not on Instagram but on like Facebook like not that long 
before and it was a very casual conversation like hey how are you i hope you're well like love seeing your pictures you look great like blah blah, blah. like you know um never in a million years did i think that that was going to be the last conversation that i had with her you know what i mean and i if i had known that i would have it would have been a phone call and it wouldn't have been a facebook message you know what i mean and um and that is kind of also like what makes this like group chat of all of us coming together so much better because we've all been checking up on each other more often and like hey how's everyone doing like you know what i mean like because i think everyone wishes that they had maybe called her that night even and been like hey are you good are you okay like you know i I think every one of us wished so hard that we had been checking up on her more um so how did i deal with it um well what were your emotions i mean obviously instantly my instant reaction because i'm the kind of person that like things have to settle with me. Like I have to stew on things and assess because things hit me later. Um, But with Halston, it was immediate and I was immediately just heartbroken. The only thing that I could think of was her mom and her sister. They've already lost a father. Now they're losing a daughter slash (coughs) sister. I'm sorry. Ah, Fighting Corona. Oh, Jesus. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Go on. (laughs) Um, so yeah, I'll, the first thing that I could think about was them and how heartbreaking that must be to to lose two, not one, but two family members, beloved family members. Um, you know, I think her mom probably thought, oh, I've had my big loss in life, my big tragic loss in life. You know, I, I I'm done. It happened like. I I don't think that her mom even probably thought that that that, that was how that was going to pan out for her. Um so for me it was immediate immediate tears, immediate sadness. I was literally at a birthday dinner sobbing into my margarita. Um and like everyone was like, "Hey, you okay? You good?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'm I'm fine. I literally can't control this right now." Um but it was one of my best friend's birthdays, so I couldn't just like go home you know what I mean and I was like I don't know if going home and being by myself would really like help the situation Mm -hmm. I I need to be around people that love me even though they don't know her um so immediate sadness tears then I transitioned into regret for not having called her more and checked on her more um then a little bit of anger I was maybe not angry, but confusion and like why, because of how it happened, because of how it happened. And we won't get into that, but like, I was just like, wow, that is like, you were in pain. Like you didn't want to live anymore. And I, like, I wish that there was something that I could have done or, you know what I mean? And so I was confused. I wanted to know more. I wanted to know like what was going on in her life at the time that she felt that she couldn't go on, you know? Um, and then eventually I think it was honestly the group chat of everyone like sending their memories of her and the pictures and everything like that. That is kind of where my like healing process started. Um, when I started to get better and listen, I'll never feel good about the situation. It's always probably going to, haunt me just a little bit because I wish she were here, you know, but, but I think the moment that I started to just kind of like be a little bit at, at peace that she's in a better place, like she's good now she is at peace. And if she was fighting such a hard battle, like I'm, I'm, if I can be happy about any of it, then I'm going to be really happy about the fact that she's at peace and that we can keep her memory alive here Yeah. in this chat. And, um, what yeah. about the group? Um, did you find personally some? You said everyone, obviously, everyone kind of deals with it differently and pulls from everything differently. But uh, what about it? Did you feel most peace from? Was it just the fact that you guys were all sharing this together, or was it the fact that you were talking about it? Did anyone? Yeah, sharing it together, going through it with a whole group of people that loved her just as much as I did, and to see how she touched everybody. I just wish that she knew how much she touched everybody. You know what I mean? I wish so badly that she could 
look down and see just how like upset everyone was to see her leave the world. You know what I mean? Like she was such a bright, shiny light, but I don't think she thought she was, you know? And so, yeah, I don't know. I think it, it was just, you know, just the sharing of the pictures and the, the memories and the, like, she would write us like, like crazy birthday messages and like sing funny made up songs about everybody and like everyone just like tossing those around. Like it just, that's that's what helped me like get through my grieving. Yeah, it's like slowly deflating a balloon. It's just kind of a release of tension. Even just yes. and that's what we're doing here. It's just I, it's odd, but I don't know if there's a real formula to po- properly grieve. No, but, there's not. And that's why it always weirds me out. I watch a lot of forensic files and like cop shows and stuff like that. You know me, love murder, <laughs> love true crime. Um, but I was watching this like episode and they're always talking about, "Oh, well that woman was grieving very strangely." And I'm like, who is you yeah. to say that? What do you know about that? Like everyone deals with it so drastically differently. Like some people go into shock. Some people immediately like cry and let it out. Some people like it just, it happens differently. Some people end up taking their own life because of grief. Like, yeah. like you, you just never, you can't really, because everyone's different. You know what I mean? So everybody deals with things differently and like, Yeah, my opinion on that is I think there's no, you know, formula for it. But at the same time, I I think whatever you feel, I think the most important thing is whatever you feel just to let that out. But where there there is could be some structure is as long as you like, as long as you make certain choices in between because you can let out what you feel and then all of a sudden start drinking. And obviously, I don't think that's the right way to grieve. You know what I mean? So there's those little, these little, uh, those little details in between that I think could be formulated most people's immediate reaction to like grab the bottle when they're grieving anything. I feel like, you know what I mean? It's just numbing it. It doesn't solve it. Yeah. No, no, it doesn't solve anything. I think it's just like an immediate relief. You know, I just had breakfast with a a really good friend of mine. He's a a really well-known director. I mean, you know, I don't see him too often. He's actually going to be on a couple episodes. I look forward to having him. Um, But he he made a really good point about, um, you know, he was going through some things and, he, he, he was, he drank, I'm not, he wasn't like an excessive drinker from my understanding, but he's like, it was just, it was just numbing it. It's like taking an Advil, like it kind of just relieves the pain, but it doesn't cure the, the pain. Right. So he realized once he had to pull away from the alcohol, he had to confront it. And I think that is the biggest thing is just, it's just facing it, facing looking it. at it in its eye and then, and then kind of just deducing from there. Exactly. Like, it was very final to realize, okay, she's not here anymore. And now we have to move forward and not, I can't sit here in this like place of regret of like, Oh God, I wish I had just called her. I wish I had just like seen if she was okay. And that'll drive you nuts. It it was for a minute. It was driving me a little crazy. I was, I felt, I felt guilty almost that, or like maybe I didn't love her hard enough in high school. Maybe I could have loved her more so that she knew how loved she was. Like maybe what I could have done this could have, could could have, would have, should have. Like the point is, is that I can't go back in time. I can't change what happened. What happened is what happened. And the only place, the only thing that I can do right now is keep her memory alive and, you know. And learn from it. And learn from it. Yeah. Honestly, it made me have to really take a look at death. Because my dad's sick. Like, I don't I don't know what's gonna happen with my dad being sick. He's got he's got leukemia. Like, you know what I mean? Like he's doing okay right now. Like things are things are good. But at the same time, like it kind of like forced me to be like, okay, my parents aren't gonna be around forever. And like one day I'm gonna have to face that head on. And it is kind of not nice to have to deal with it but it's nice to ha- to like have had lost people and to kind of get the hang of dealing with it you know what i mean yeah um so yeah so i think that's pretty that's i think like and that, that goes along to just facing it and that's why it's important to uh to pull from it i mean uh it's what silver lining did you get out of losing your dad I think there's a lot of silver linings and some of it's contradictory because the thing that 
ekes at me is I'm very I'm blessed to be very close to my family as are you, and you know I think it's just uh it's just really important to be present with them and just do those little things, but also to live your life. And that's where it's kind of a paradox because, you know, I'm, I love my mom. I love my sisters to death. I would do literally anything for them. And I still decided to drive 3000 miles away because I felt like this gravitational pull moving from Jersey to LA. And that's where it's contradicted because, you know, I want to spend more time with the people I care about. I want to be there for the people I care about. But at the same time, the, the other side of the spectrum is I have things I really want to do for myself selfishly. And so that's where it's kind of a, a an odd, an oddity of, you know, I want to be spending time with the people I love and checking on them, but I'm also want to do my thing. So that's where it's a challenge. Um, I don't think, I think just obviously I didn't know your dad, but like based on like what I know of you and like who you are and he obviously had a hand in raising you that um, like, I don't think that he would want you to not go see what you can do in the world. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, that, that's the blessing on account sisters. of taking care of your family because he's gone. Like, like, I don't think that he would have wanted that for you. You know, you know, my mom and sister say the same thing. They, they, they support, of course, like David come they home, but they yeah, want me to be, they're still like yeah, support. Yeah. They say that like sarcastic, but seriously, but they, they <laughs> I have the support system. Um, but just ultimately I, I think, you know, you just, you just pull from the things that you wish you did. Like, I mean, I was 12 years old when it happened, but I remember like one story, my dad, like really, it was so engraved in my head. He really embarrassed me at school. And to, it, it's the quick story is he like dropped me off from school, which usually was my mom. And he did, he, my dad was known for just saying, Hey kid, like, Hey kid. So like HK was a thing that we had in our jerseys and the Linkroft little league. Linkroft was a town in Jersey. And he dropped me off. Little at, league. A little league. Yeah. So I, was, I was pretty damn good. He's a little leaguer. <laughs> <laughs> you know I wish I could edit in that track, but, um, <laughs> So anyway, he dropped me off at school and as I was leaving, I was like, you know, <laughs> walking into the school at elementary school and he was just kept yelling my name. He was like, hey kid, hey kid. As I was still in the school, he's yelling. It was so aggressive that he was like 30 feet away, still yelling my name. I was in the school and in my head, I was mortified. As a young kid at like whatever, nine years old, 10 years old, I was like, Why were we embarrassed I know. by that kind of thing? And that's what pisses me off cares. because if I were to go, if I knew, knew what I knew now going back, uh -huh. I'm, like, my, I'm like, dad, yell my name the entire school day quote unquote, embarrass me. I don't care. So the silver lining from that is, it's just, you know, I love my dad. I, I just certain people in you, I feel love. So all you gotta do is just keep it simple and just don't think about, just think about like, just, just be, just be here now. That's it. Just simple is very easily stated. Just be here now. As long as you understand and are clear about what you love, that's really it. I mean, I don't know what else, like the material shit doesn't matter. It's very cliche, but it just made, it made me more present and just realized the fragility is fragility a word? Fragility. It's fra mm. Fragility of life. Life is fragile. Life's fragile. Life's fragile. Life is fragile, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you for tuning in. Um, <laughs> but no, yes. Yeah, simply stated again, I'm going off on a rant, but it's just how quick things can go. So we just got to enjoy right now. Like so I, what was the silver lining, though? Just to be here now and just enjoy be the little now. things in life and just That's love what the you learned from life. it. Yeah. Just, yeah. just be here now and also just, yeah, just realize how fragile everything is and just don't take anything for granted. So I definitely learned to not take things for granted. And that's the message I'm hoping to get along from bringing people you like you on and realize, you know, you just, there's things you could have done and yeah, you can drown yourself thinking about things you could have done, would have, could have, should have. But now the only thing you can do is just apply that later. Like I'm curious to know, yeah. it's only been a year and I know you care, you're, you're a good friend to all the people we're all around, but have you noticed any difference in like the simple checkup phone calls? Like, is that something you even noticed or it's kind of too soon? You know, I've always kind of been like that. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of motherly in that way. I feel like I check on my friends. And a great cook. Thank you. You're welcome. What can I say? <laughs> Wife me up, baby. <laughs> um, no, I, I feel like I've always kind of been that way. I've always been the friend checker up or honor. Um, wait, that's come, why wait, I think I on. felt. R beep, beep, beep. The friend checker upper honor? Yeah, the friend checker upper honor. Okay, it makes um, sense actually. Yeah, no, it does. <laughs> um, and I think that's why I was kicking myself so hard when she passed away that I haven't kept up with any, uh, not any of them. I, some of them, I was obviously, you know, when you have a big group of friends, like everyone's friends, but you're like kind of closer to some than others. And so I would check up, you know, with maybe a couple of them, but not all of them and like I wasn't 
a lot of time went by. I, I also went through this phase when I moved out here at a young age. I was like, fuck Texas, fuck this. Like, I'm going to LA and I'm going to do this with my life. And like, well, I had this like pompous ass attitude about how much I hated my hometown. And the longer that I lived out here and the more like my life progressed and I got older and I got more w wiser and more mature, I just realized like, no, I grew up in the greatest town ever. And I loved all of those people, even though there was a lot of petty high school drama, you know, it was like all those, all the bad just evaporated. And I just remembered how much I loved all of them and had a bond with all of them. Um, so I think that's where a lot of like me kicking myself in this like regret of not keeping up with them and not like checking on them more not seeing like, Hey, like how's life? Like, you know what I mean? Um, and I, and I didn't do that with her, you know? So I think that that's also kind of like why I was so upset about it because I am that person. I usually do check up on my friends and I do think, especially now, like if my friends are like, Hey, I'm not doing well or like something like that, then I'm like, tuning in yeah tunnel vision on it i'm like yeah. okay well, what do you need what do you need what do you need like because i can't i can't lose i can't imagine losing anybody that's like in my tight-knit circle you know you know like who my friends are we run with the same crew yeah um like i can't imagine losing one of them and the guilt of me not checking on them or seeing how they were or seeing like like I couldn't, I don't like that would be hard to live with. It would be really hard to live with. So I try and keep my eyes open and my ears open and pay attention to little things. Like most of my friends I can tell at this point, like if, if they're not doing well. Um, and I am friends like really tight with, with really good communicators at this point. So these are people who I feel like if there were something really, really like weighing on them or going on with them, that they would also let me know. Yeah. And also, you know, I just just to encourage people that are listening to this, like if you're not doing well, please talk to your friends because I promise you they care. And yeah. like there are people on this planet that don't want you to leave the earth. You know what I mean? Um, and some people are just not uh, not good at checking in on their friends. You know what I mean? Like some people aren't good at that at all. And there could have been a lot of avoided suicides maybe if we all just like did a little better, you know? Yeah. It's just kind of like being nice to the stranger next to you. You never know what anyone's going through. And that's the crazy part too. Cause I truly feel like even if I'm in, I've gotten better at it, but if I'm in a bad mood and someone just, I don't even know a simple smile. I know it's very simple, but yeah, those little, those little acknowledgements that some people don't well, often get. And like this girl, this girl was a popular girl. She was very popular. Everybody liked her. She was so funny and like, just wild personality and like everybody love everybody dug her you know what I mean and so it's kind of hard like even even those people who like seem to have everything going well or like even the people that you see smiling on their Facebook every day or oh she's cute and she's funny and she's cool like she's fine like don't don't assume you know yeah do you think that's like social media is one thing but it's just something about social media social media social media but no, there's something about that whole like, I don't know, is it a societal thing that we have to mask our emotions? Is that still a thing? I mean, it's just, we have to put on this, fr well, have to, but it's just like front that we got to be okay. But I don't know what it is about the comfort level of insecurity of just, I mean, I'm like that. I used to be someone who didn't express how I felt. So I kind of get it, but I don't know what that is innately. And it's so odd when you see someone who seems so happy and has all these friends that would do something like that. It makes you, it kind of really digs deep and think, why? Like, it really makes you dig deep why when it's someone like you're explaining your friend that seems so like delightful, but like what the hell was going on in her head? Exactly. And it's scary and it's frustrating and it's sad. And she, like I said, she wasn't a big talker about that. Maybe like that's it. It was like pulling teeth to get her to talk about those emotions. And that is a big thing that we all need to do better is like being honest with ourselves when, when we – aren't feeling the best yeah um and like speaking up and telling people because more people care than you think you know what i mean yeah i think we get like in our heads and we're like nobody gives a fuck like nobody gives a fuck yeah um 
there's been so many times that I've gotten in my head like that and that I, I convinced myself that literally nobody cares about how I'm feeling at this moment. And like, I couldn't be more far off base. You know what I mean? Um, why do you think you think that? And why do you think people think that? I don't know. Or what is that? I don't know. I don't know. Insecurities maybe, or maybe people aren't loving you the way that you need to be loved, but in order for people to love you in the way that you need to be loved, you have to communicate how you need to be loved. And I think that people also have a problem with that. Just communication in general, like not being able to just. Not everyone has that too. I realize, you know, I'm blessed to have a lot of friends. Like, I mean, I don't know why people want to be friends with me. And are you kidding? Let's not go off. To I'm that obsessed with you. <laughs> you bit. I'm gonna use that sound bit for the advertising in this episode. You should. Um, but yeah, not everyone has, you know, like a tight knit group. It's very, it's, it's, it's unfortunate, but that's just yeah. the way it is. So I wonder what those people can do that would help them. I don't know if it just starts at you being honest with yourself. And not getting in your head, we just create, we just naturally create these stories that aren't even real, and that's where I think fear stems from. But what I wanted to ask you was, you said you started contemplating death a little bit more, and then immediately you, you related to your father, mm-hmm. who's I know your father pretty well at this point. He's yeah, amazing. you love my dad. Yeah, I think he's my the, dad loves you. Look, look at that, <laughs> my my man, <laughs> Warren. Come on, I don't know if I should say his name. Sorry, I apologize. For that no, no, it's uh, fine. Cool, well, whatever. Warren Samuels was up. Was up. Um, yeah, and I I just uh, I wondered. What bridge that made? Um, like you said, you were. Con- you, what do you mean? What do you mean thinking about death? Like, what does that mean? Well, just because. Okay, so we found out that my dad has leukemia. Right. Um, my immediate thought when I found that out was that I'm going to lose my dad. Like that's just like. I don't know why I'm like. What am I crying? This is I mean, silly. Talking about your oh, dad. Sorry, I know he's very special to me, um, and I like. I'm a daddy's girl. 100%. I love my mother, but like I'm a daddy's girl and I think losing him will be the hardest thing that I ever have to deal with in my life. Um and like losing anybody, losing losing Halston, lo- death in general, just gets your your mind like turning and like you just you just wonder like you start thinking about the people that matter most to you. And then you just think, you know, and then I just I knew he was sick. He, you know, this this happened last year, and we've known he's sick for, for quite some time. And just to clarify, he's doing fine. Like he's goes in, gets he's got the lowest form of leukemia that one can have. He goes in every six months to get monitored, check his levels. If his like his levels aren't even to a point, and like I say his levels, but I don't I don't know what I'm saying. All I know is that it hasn't progressed enough that he has to be on any chemo. Like chemo would be more harmful to him than the cancer is at this point. So. He's doing fine. He's good. He's like in a very good place. He just got his six month checkup. He's he's fine. But, you know, you hear cancer and you immediately think death. Right. And and like that that will be the hardest person for me to lose because he is like my he is like my source of wisdom. He's who I go to when I like want advice, who I talk to. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know why it made me think of that immediately, but it did. And I think that that's just like in any time that you lose someone or whatever, that's 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 kind of just where your mind goes is like you just start thinking about death and you think about the people you love and losing yeah, losing him is going to be like really really tough and it just it honestly kind of like at least gave me like an outlet in acting like the, the second that I need to like muster up tears, I just think about like possibly losing my father and I'm like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> so like, you know, it's just it just hits a nerve and it makes you think. I, that's the, it makes that's you the, think. That's the yeah, of it just death. makes you think about it and the thought about it is just like, oh, and it makes me cherish my relationship with him so much more and it makes me want to talk to him more and get his advice more and like my dad does this thing called letters to my daughter where he always writes me and my sisters a letter sends it with like a little Starbucks gift card and, you know, just like a letter about whatever he's thinking or feeling or, you know, my dad's a really big Christian. So like any like scripture in the Bible or something that laid on his heart, he wanted to share with everyone or, you know, something, anything like that, he sends that to us. And so I've saved them ever. I don't know why, but I've always saved them 
and I put them in a folder and I have this like really thick folder of like all of his letters and I'm like at least I have that you know yeah. like if ever the day comes that I do lose my dad like I can have that and go back and look at it and because I'm not having kids anytime soon obviously nobody wants to date me Los Angeles um but <laughs> but like one day my kids if I ever have them um can know know him through that if he's not here like you know what i mean so yeah it losing her was so abrupt that i think that it just it kind of like shifted my mindset into knowing that like death is inevitable and like i kind of was i knew that obviously but always just kind of thought that my parents would be around you know what i mean and like the harsh reality is they're not they're not so you do have to cherish your time with them and you have to like not go to sleep angry and tell them you love them and see them every chance you get. And, you know, I think that that's probably another thing that I learned through this entire process of, you know. Yeah. And that's the, impo <clears throat> that's the important part of considering death. I think innately everyone just kind of, it's just, oh, why are you bringing that up? It's so morbid, but it's not, it's not that it's, yeah, it's sad and it's morbid, but it's life. Like death is life and everything we the way we perceive death affects how we live our life. So I think that's why it's important to be aware of it because like you said, you haven't been thinking about it, but once you started thinking about death, look at all these good things that came from you. You started really, like, not that you, you've always appreciated your dad, of course, yeah. but there's a different, there's a next level of being grateful for what you have when you make that realization that, you know, we're, they're not going to, we're not going to be here forever. And that's why I think the sooner you kind of accept that you can live in the now more, more powerfully. And then and that makes every moment that you share with your dad now even more impactful. Yeah. You know? No, it is. And I just, I think, you know, when I had first moved out here and I was, I moved out here when I was 18. Okay. So I was like still technically a freaking child. Um, and I moved, I moved out here and like, kind of like wouldn't really answer my parents. Call. I was living my life. And like, I feel like obviously like you kind of had to grow up and like go through that especially when you move out here and you have so much freedom as an 18 year old and you're not going to college you're just acting and you're living in LA like I I didn't want to hear what he had to say I didn't want to I didn't care like I didn't really want to sit and talk on the phone all day like and I just like it also comes with age and like I said like getting wiser and more mature you you start to just appreciate the family that you have and and just comes with experience. Comes with experience. And now, like, I always answer when he calls. Like, I would never leave my father on, like, scene. Like, I, I like, like I, I talk to him all the time. Talk, We talk all the time, even if we have nothing to talk about. Like, and, and it is good. I mean, it's going to make losing him very, very hard just because, like, we get closer, obviously, the more that you're, like, sharing and, and whatever. Um, but there's really no need to, like, sit around and think about that day that I might inevitably lose my father. Like that, like it, it's to live in the now, like you were saying earlier and to just like enjoy the time on earth that you have with them. Cause that's it. That's it. We don't know. We don't, you know, and it's really important not to let the sun go down on your anger. You know, yeah. it's really, really important to, to like, hash out whatever issues you might have or just let it go let it go like it's it doesn't matter in the afterlife yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean like none of, none of it matters and it's probably petty anyway so are you at peace with the the idea of just death in general obviously I'm most intimately your father but it i'm at peace with it um because i i know i know i've i've met, i know your dad by now um they always get closer but I feel like if there's ever a man that's, you know, more at peace with the idea of that, like I've even heard him say it. He's like, no, that, that's, he, like whatever's like, what's next, what his belief is, he's like, that's the glory. So it's. Yeah, he is very. And I think that that's the only reason why I'm able to be even kind of like, OK, is that I know that he's like not scared at all. Does, that, and does he's he prep like, you at all for that? Huh? Does he like hopefully it's another. 50 fucking years from now, but yeah. does he prep you at all from that? Have you guys discussed this? What? Just, him? In, just in general, yeah, like him being sick and- Um, we, when I, when we found, when I found out, I went home for a month 
and spend as much time with him as I could. I just needed to be home. I didn't want to be here by myself. I'm the only one that like doesn't live in Texas out of my entire family. So I, you know, went home for a month. I was there. We talked about it a lot then because it was all really fresh and really scary. Now that I know a little bit more about his like illness and how it's, you know, for some reason, God's not progressing it in his body. It's just staying where it is. So as like now that I know a little bit more about it, I know like that he's okay. Like I, I, we don't talk about it as much anymore, but there was a time when, when, yeah, we were, we were touching on that. And I think he got, so with his leukemia, he is very prone to other illnesses because his white blood cell count is really low. And so he, like his, like he just can get really sick really easily from nothing. So he being like the dingus that he is like literally like picked a nose hair out of his nose and within six hours had precepsis cellulitis like in his in this side of his body. His face gets deadly, by the way. You don't you look like you don't know what that is, but yeah. his so it's basically like a type of like staph infection. Okay. Ooh. Um, it's not good. It's very bad. If it had gone any higher, it would have affected his brain and his eyes and his like like all this stuff. And he just got like ill like so so quick and i think that that was also the moment that he realized that like okay like this is real this is real like like this was a very scary little incident that we had and now he's just very he's very super careful super careful now like he he's he's really prone to like food poisonings and uh pneumonia and like stuff like that so he's just got he's just got to like be careful it's a different way of life for him um but like that was the moment that we all kind of like had a a really big scare with the reality of the situation. Um, And obviously he's still here. He's, he's, Mm -hmm. you know, so I I don't really like, I know this is about like dead talks and he's not dead, but, um, but it was just very eye opening and very like, like I had to come to terms with that and be like, okay, this is like, your parents are not invincible. Have you come to terms with it? Um, as best as one can. Yeah. I think that I try really hard to just love him and be with him and like support him and, you know, be his yeah. daughter. I mean, and like, like, oh, you're going to die someday every fucking time you talk to him. Yeah. Like, like no, that. like what's like, what else? Like, you know, there's really nothing that I can like do or say about that. So, um, so I just kind of like live and let live, but you know, he has been doing his best to prep us for the time and oh. it all start just by being like hey guys i'm at peace i know where i'm going is better than here and like i'm not going anywhere until god's ready for me to go somewhere so like it's it's completely out of my hands and like i'm good like you should be good too like you know what i mean and that <coughs> sorry <laughs> um let it out that is what gave me peace was that he was at peace and that it wasn't this big scary thing and we weren't tiptoeing around it. He was like, if it happens, it happens. And that's like, that's life. You know what I mean? Um, there is a sense of comfort knowing that they're good, yeah. you know, and that they're not terrified or they're not like whatever it, it there's a sense of comfort. Um, You know, and my dad's like worked his ass off his whole life just to be able to like make sure everyone's good after he is gone anyway. So he's just like, I'm good. What's what, you know? And so. So do you share the same belief in what's next? Yeah, I do. So if you're, if you feel, if you have that same belief and you feel strongly that whatever's next is eternal bliss, however you want to say it, then. Yeah. What the hell is to be? I guess it, you, is it more the f- not fear, or is it more just the fact they don't have someone there as opposed to the idea of death? He just means so much to me. Like, yeah. I love him so much. Like he's the best dad ever, and you know I, that. I know you that. know yeah, you've yeah. met him. Like he's he's an amazing man, and he's gonna leave a huge hole in the world when he leaves because so many people love him, and. Oh, why am I crying? Like, I mean, God. I, I, please, <laughs> Does anybody no. else cry? Am I the only crier? I mean, I could think about something sad if you want me to join you. No. <laughs> uh, no but that's it's it's cool because oh god, that was the wrong word to use at that time. But the, the way you it's cool, it's cool, dude. It's cool, dude. No, the way I mean, 
back to your friend and the implication of that, how, you know, it made you think, I think it made you more sensitive to that. Obviously hearing your dad just getting the sickness makes you think too, but it's so powerful how, you know, the death of one friend can have that impact on 20 more friends. And then the death of that friend implicates the way you see your family and live your life. Like I yeah. you've always been, I'm, I only know, I've known you for a while now and I, your friend died a year ago. So I'm, I think you've always been this type of person, but that's kind of what you got to pull from it. When, when someone dies, it's easy though. to like, you know, as life goes on, would you like more wine? Uh, yeah, I'll top that off. Pass it top, over here. Top her off, honey. Um, it's really easy to get sidetracked. Yeah, we had the same roof, the same routines every day. There's so yeah, much things going on. It's that- really easy to get sidetracked with like yourself and your own life and things that you want. And I do think that that's important. But at the same time, like we can't forget to the reality of it and like. You know, there have been people that, like, I've had falling outs with and, like, people that I'm not friends with anymore. And, like, it does make me want to, like, like, hey, we probably don't have business being friends because we, like, don't mesh or, like, whatever. But at the end of the day, like, it would be nice for those people to know that, like, if you left the world, it would affect me. And, like. It's just compassion, no? Yeah, like that's like, the simplest way to put it. At the end of the day, no matter who you come in contact with, just simple compassion. It's easy to be get frustrated with this person, but just God, just don't be so like the, well, the littlest things. Let make it such go. A difference. Just let it go. Let it go. Why are you so mad? Like, yeah, it's like why the hell I was so I was a young kid. When but, we have death to worry about, like, why are you upset that someone's not doing or like behaving the way that you want them to or whatever? You know what I mean? Like, it's just like. It's so minute in the grand scheme of things, I think. Yeah, I mean, and we're just so short we're just so short sighted about things. It's so true. We're always living in the past or the future. We're not like living right here. Like, exactly, exactly. I've said this before. I was worried about being so redundant on the show, but it's it's I think we overcomplicate things. I think just I think life is a lot more simple than than even I think. You know, it may be redundant, but at the same time, like these this, that's something that everyone everywhere needs to be reminded of constantly yeah. because it, it is so easy to get like lost in the, the like bump and grind of it all bump and grind. No, it's got death to just, s- the, s- just the grind, not just, the bump. Yeah, leave, leave the bump out. Let's just, <laughs> let's just grind. <laughs> no bumping today, please. Uh, <laughs> no, but it's, it's important to talk about this. I mean, I've known you for years now. Obviously we've talked about everything, but we've never, uh, we've never even had a discussion like this. So it's really cool. It's really important to have, to be so communicative. We haven't. I mean, not to this depth, I don't think. Oh, we? sure. Perhaps not. Perhaps not. But Maybe not like It's my, important like, to talk about this shit. Not my thoughts on it. Yeah. So I'm excited. It's like, it's, it's an odd subject to get excited about, but death is life. Everything revolves around that. And it's not morbid. It's just, it makes you realize a lot of good things. It makes, and, and it's, I don't want to make it seem sacrificial, but I hope your friend right now, if she's listening, if she has any, you know, grasp on this, it's like, she did have an impact. And that's why it's important. Just to- she did. She had such an impact on all of us. Like she's someone that like most of my memories from like high school involve something wacky that Halston was doing. And, and we all loved her so much. And like, despite of her weirdness, you know what I mean? And like, it was a good weirdness. It wasn't like that girl's weird. Like she was just like, like people the say wacky I'm weird. weird. People say I'm weird person. all the time. People say I'm weird. I am. I am. I am I'm her, weird. Uh, uh, whatever. But, um, but it's just little things. That's why it's so important. So if anyone is listening, hopefully we're going to get more and more people listening. But if whoever the hell is listening, let people know. Like it's it's it, it goes a long way. Just like you don't have to keep it inside you that someone cares. Like it's like, listen, man. Like I care about you. Or like, it sounds. Or like I appreciate you. Or like just to let you know. Like this and that. Just like let them know because that little gesture can go a long way. And like someone like that, I don't know what was bothering her, but I'm not going to say that was the answer. But you know, if, if you look- honestly, I feel like some people are just clinically depressed yeah, and that's, they know, just battle like a chemical imbalance and i don't have any like proof or or anything that she actually had like a chemical imbalance i just know her and i know that she struggled with depression and that you know it it was very real and so real 
that this was the result. And it is just so important to, to be vocal with your friends and family that like you are not doing well. And, you know, I know she had roommates like, and her roommates didn't even know how bad it was like pay and also pay attention. Like when people are severely depressed, I feel like it's not that hard to pick up on if you're paying attention if you're paying attention, we don't, we don't get attention. lost in our own shit. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's right. like, you're right. you know, it's really it is important point. to think about yourself, but it's also so important to think about others. And I don't think that she had any idea just how loved she was and how big of a hole there now is with her not being here. Like, she, she probably had no idea that anybody from that group of friends probably even still cared about her. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's such a powerful chain reaction on, on on both ends of the impact she created from the wave that she created from doing that, and then also on the opposite end of the spectrum, which sucks, is everyone else that's still here. You saw, you even said it. You start going back with regret, and I could have done this, I could have done that, and you know, drive yourself insane doing that. The only thing you can do is just pull from it now and and make those decisions better going on. Like what exactly. else are you supposed to do? Love hard. Talk. Talk. Communicate. Communicate. Make sure that people are that are important to you know that they're important to you. Um, that's literally all that you can do. And the world would be a better place if everyone just did that a little bit more. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, 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 Especially it's not, in this easy. town, it's hard. Like, we live in a very narcissistic place. I feel like um, everyone is like everyone sees someone else as a stepping stone. I can't say everyone because I've met like, blessed to have met you and our group of friends because I think we have some amazing. People I'm in not our speaking core. about like sure. our tight knit group. Like right. I feel like it took me a very long time to find these friends, and they've each been carefully like selected and like allowed into I'll take my you. life. I'll take you. I'll take allowed you. into my life and heart because look, like I've got to watch who gets in here these days and. All of these people that I am really tight with deserve to be there because they are equally like looking for the same things in friendships and in people and and um they're just good good people and where were we going with this? Oh, we're just pointing out important things. Important things, yeah. <laughs> um yeah, and they just each one of them is so special and dear to my heart. Like they, they I don't know where we we're going with this. No, we're going I, somewhere I with we're this. Hitting, I think we're hitting bullet points as to what we should be doing, taking from what we've learned. Taking from what we've learned. And we just, I think we hit a lot of the heads right there. Yeah, like. Oh man, I don't know. What this is. I don't know what this is. What is this? What are we doing? It's a simulation. Oh Jesus. No, I love this, David. I love this. I really do. I really love this. <laughs> no, that's why it's 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 just important. I'm. Ha- I, I want to thank you for being on here because uh, obviously you're like. You're honestly a staple in my life at this point. You really are. I hope you know that. And so? It's so cool. I know. <laughs> it's just like, what? Oh, like, God. I don't think the audience needs to hear about our uh, friendship affair. But They um, do. They need to know. We love each other. Here it is. Uh, you might be the first person that looked directly at the camera. What can I say? I'm an actress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, um, yeah, no, I think uh, you know, I, I think, I think you've took all the positive points from your friend and then- you took a lot of good from that. And trying now you're to apply it, to your it and like, you know, applying it to my dad, applying it, trying to apply it to everyone that I like hold near and dear to my heart. Like truly like just, and that's like most of these people I don't really get in fights with, but like when there is a disagreement or whatever, I say what I mean, I mean what I say, and then we get over it and we like, we're good. We're good because I don't I literally don't want the sun to go down on my anger with anybody that is now currently like in my life. You know what I mean? Because it is. Can you imagine like having a huge fight with somebody and it's a stupid like petty fight that right. doesn't matter? Yeah. I'm or really it's stupid. It. It's it's based off of jealousy or stupid, stupid issues that don't matter. And then something God forbid happens, they get a car accident or hit by a drunk driver or, you know, like whatever. And you, you didn't, and, and you haven't spoken to them because you're 
mad about what? Like, yeah, you I know think, what I mean? I think this is going to make, it's going to sound, you know, a little aggressive for most people, but I think it's actually important the way I look at it sometimes. It's like, if I'm going to grudge with someone, which I don't really get in too many grudges. I kinda, no, I you are like the least, like. I really just let things go. And sometimes, yeah. sometimes I get mad at myself. I'm like, damn, I should be more pissed off, but I just really don't care. It's like, I just let it yeah. go. And I think if I'm, I've never gotten in like a feud with my mom, my sisters. I really don't ever foresee that happening. It's just too powerful. I don't really, yeah. I don't really fight with my family. Like we might get into like tips or something or like a little like But what I was saying, what I was saying was if if you are in a grudge with someone and you're in like an argument with someone that you know you love, just like sit there for a second, no matter how, you know, morbid it might sound. Think, okay, God forbid, if this person actually died while we were still having this grudge, are you still going to be pissed off at that person? Like, is it that important to you that you're still going to be pissed off that you're not going to have any regrets? If you have any inclination of, you know, if I lost this person, if they weren't here today, if they disappeared from my life for whatever reason, am I going to feel a level of regret? Then maybe that's a little note, but like, yo, settle that shit now because the rest of your life is going to be completely unclosed. Doing on that. Stewing yeah, on that. there's no closure for that. And like, it will literally the the regret will eat you alive, and that's the power of suicide because that that is like the the core of potential regret of I could have done this and that. So that's why it's important to have these conversations, hear like someone from you and your perspectives and what you learn from it because there is a lot to take from it, whether you've experienced it or not. And um, I don't know. There's just there's just so much we can go from here, but. Yeah, if yeah, if you're someone who like is actually like contemplating suicide and you're someone that you feel alone in the world, like you have to have to have to have to have to communicate with people you trust. There's got to be somebody that you trust that you are able to talk to about that and like deal with it. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I can't. Re- I can't. I can't even. I can't. Close to I, relating. Can't, I can't. I can't. Like, you have to I can't relate, but I have, you know. Now I've known two people that have committed suicide. One of them was a dear friend. One of them was a dear acquaintance, like someone that was always so nice to me in the hallways when not a lot of people were nice to me at that school that I went to for like two years, a year. Um, and she was always so kind. She was so sweet, sweet to everybody amazing girl and I think I I don't know I have no idea like she wasn't someone that I like kept up with that much but in high school we were pretty good friends and it's just it's just insane like you just don't know because like from her from her Facebook posts I was like oh my god she has two kids and a husband and they're going to Florida and looking lovely in their white matching outfits and like looks like all everything's like hunky-dory and like clearly it wasn't, you yeah. know, and I I don't know. I hadn't communicated with her in a while. I don't know if she communicated with anyone about how she was feeling, but there is just an important an importance to reach out to people and be like, hey, I'm not I'm not well, yeah. you know, like. A little thing I've been do- I've always done for a while is I always just, even as little as this like if I randomly think about someone. I'll reach out to that person. It's not like, you know, all, all throughout Same. the days, you just like think, I randomly think, I think I do that to you. I do it to you. Yeah, like how many times am I always just like, like some. I was walking like, up the stairs, saw a flickering light, thought it was a horror movie and I texted you about it. So it's like, I think when you think about these people, like a little, especially this day and age, it's so easy to reach out. Just at the end of this, I think the all encompassing wrap up of this is just, just communicate, talk, let people know you care if you do and just be compassionate. It's very simple. This is very cliche shit. But at the end of the day, I think that's how simple it is because a little those little gestures can make the difference in someone's life. And um, when you're grieving, how do you like for people to be there for you? That's a tough one. Because I, you don't yeah. really there's nothing anyone can physically actually do other than just like be in your presence. But a lot of times they don't know how to be there for you. You know what I mean? Like, like I remember like when I found out about Halston, I was at a birthday party, obviously, which was like the worst possible place for one to find a piece of information like that out. Um, But everyone was just like, Oh, are you okay? And I'm like, 
I mean, I'm sobbing into my margarita, like I said earlier. I was like, I'm clearly I'm not okay with this information, but I don't don't know what else there is for you to do for me other than to just like let me be sad, I guess, you know, but people get yeah. so uncomfortable when you're Yeah, the other side's hard. I think that's kind of that's the battle I've been thinking about just this conversation because it's like, what do you say? The most people say I'm sorry. And then when people say that to me, I, I like you didn't kill my dad. Why are you saying sorry? But I get it. Like the other side, of the, the other side of the table, it's very hard. Me personally, I am more like a pat in the back, I'm here type shit. So if 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 I if I have to deal with someone, I try not to say I'm sorry. I, mean, I don't know if that's because I don't know what to say. I don't even know what to say. If anything, it's that listen, I'm here for you. Just let you know that it's good to talk about it. If you want to talk, you come to me. I'm here for you. I love you. That's it. It's like, I don't want to offer advice because it's not like I can totally relate. I don't want to say the wrong thing, but you also don't want to like be too cold and like they might think, why is this person not here? At the end of the day, it's up to that person to communicate it. So like if you are grieving, it's important to you to tell the people around you how you feel and what you want. It's okay to be selfish about that. Yeah. Like one of our close friends lost her mother not too long ago and she was so upset. We were all like dressed and ready to go to the Renaissance fair. And we found out like a few minutes before we were supposed to leave for the Renaissance fair. So we all like left where we were and went back to, you know, be with her. And she was like, I literally want you to go to the Renaissance fair. Right. I do not need everyone here right now. I want to lie down, watch a movie and like, have a little wine and just like be. And we were like, okay, it sounds to me like you want some space. Right. And that's also valid too. But you have to communicate with people how you want them to treat you while exactly. you're grieving. And she did that. And she did. She she did. And she and then we all came back, brought dinner, had like hung out and like she didn't want to talk about it, so we didn't talk about it. We just ate pizza and hung out and watched movies. And you know what I mean? Sometimes that's all they really need is just the presence of others instead of like – I was actually there but at the end yeah. of the week when we hung out. But at the same time, it's true. It's, it's really it's, – it's, it's a weird – it's kind of like a game where you know you don't want to overstep. You also want to let them know you're there. So in my opinion, that's why it's like I think just letting them know you're there – Letting them know to please communicate. I think even – I don't know if it's our duty to say that, but I like saying if you need anything, please, like I'm here. Just tell me I what know. you want. I'm always the one that's like, hey, if you need anything, let me know. And most people I don't let, take you up on that. They don't. They don't take you up on it. I don't know why because I don't think there is anything physical that one could do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes, David, b bring me a dozen sunflowers, a balloon that says feel better soon, yeah, right. and a card. Like, Yeah, I know exactly. Like, There's no answer to it. I, I don't really know. That wouldn't do shit. It's like putting a Band-Aid on an amputated leg. Like, I think you, just fit, you have to fit. You kind of react and respond. Like, There's no, there's no way. Would, I think if you know someone well enough, you kind of know. Other than that, I think just the fact that you're, you know you're there and – they know you're there and that's it. What, what else can you do? There's no way. Everyone reacts differently. It's just like everyone grieves differently. Yeah. I wish I, I don't have the answers. That's why I'm bringing people like you on. Maybe I'll start learning some shit. Maybe. <laughs> really Maybe, honey. Maybe, honey. I don't know shit. So don't look for me. <laughs> don't look at me for answers. Yeah, just... Maybe uh, we, should hit, we should hit record again after we finish this bottle of wine. It might be a totally different conversation. Woo! Um, but Laura, now I want to thank you as always for being here. It means a lot. Of course. You've always shown a lot of support. So uh, I do support and I love you. And I know that like, what happened with you happened so long ago, but it doesn't make it easier that it was long ago. And I think that it's really cool that you're doing this podcast because I do think that there is like a demographic of people that don't know maybe how to deal with grief and that maybe they are alone. You know, that small population you're talking about that like might not have like a tight knit group of friends or something exactly. like that. Like this could be an outlet for them to just know that everybody else suffers too yeah. and that they're not alone, that like people grieve and people are hurting and that people have lost people and that they're not the only person that is going through something. Like this yeah. is a really good thing that you're doing, just being able to like reach 
those people. And yeah. you're you're right. It is such like a taboo topic. I don't. I, yeah, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. Most, I, we're all in this. Sh- we're all in this together. We're all in this shit show called life together. But it goes like, back to. I don't want to keep going to a whole another rant, but it goes back to like someone drinking to relieve their pain. Like you break up with someone, you lose your job, you drink just to temporarily relieve it. But the same problems are there. Therefore, like we can avoid death, but it's the same thing. It's always going to be there. So the sooner we can kind of find peace, some way or some sense of peace, I think the greater we can live our life. So that's why you know, yeah. I, like you said, you, the people that don't have someone to talk to, there's plenty of people. People, some people don't want to talk about it, and that's fine too. So I'm hoping this is like an indirect yeah. way for Maybe them to like not talk. If but they hear. don't want to talk, but they can listen and just know that like other people have gone through what they're going through, and that um, grain of salt pull from yeah. here. It's not going to be yeah. exactly relatable. Absolutely. But this so and that. when I knew you were doing this, I was like, okay, yeah, like I want to be a part of it. I, I'd like to chat with you. Yeah, no, you, you know? I, I think you've you have a lot. What your your stories very good for people to hear and there's different angles to it besides just your friend, you got your dad and just what you took from it. And that's exactly what I want people to hear. It's not about what I have to say. It's about your story. So thank you again for being willing to share this with people. I'm oh, hoping yeah. people are going to listen. So if you are listening, um, and I've said this before, I guess I'm supposed to say this at the end of these podcasts, subscribe, like review, if you like it. And if you, like I said before, if you don't like it, just don't review. Don't, but, um, review. don't review. Yeah, if you don't like it, you can take a hike. <laughs> but um, yeah, so Laura Samuels, she has her own podcast as well, like I mentioned in the beginning. So if you're listening this deep, you got two and a half girls, or Brett and Cassie, two extraordinary people as well. Um, that you'll have on here. Yeah, I'm actually looking for. I actually text Brett, texted Brett. Did you text? Bre- did you text Cassie? I didn't. Yeah, because I, I, you know, Cassie's I, got a very interesting story. You should definitely bring her on. So I'll, I'll yeah. message Cassie as soon as she's cool with it, and Cassie will be another guest. We got the other one and a half girls coming on the, the one and a half too. girls yeah. oh boy get Which ready is this is at two and a half girls at two and a half girls all spelled out bing bang boom all the words yeah cool we got, <laughs> we got a bunch of episodes out so check them out check out laura and yeah laura. check laura out check laura out she's a hot girl <laughs> <laughs> awkward okay anyway uh once again let's clear the music thank you again another episode of dead talks david Fergio, and we out